So I know you have a pretty big claim you want to share with us, one that, you know, I'm not entirely convinced of, but I'm, I'm excited to hear your arguments, that you think China will launch an invasion of Taiwan this month. Okay, I said not an, a full invasion. I'm talking about a small island, but I'll, let me get into that. Uh, uh, let me I know, I'm, I'm saying it in such like a, you know, He's internet sexy way, it, invasion. Hype, hype it up. China's yeah. invading Taiwan this month. That's going to be the title of this video, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> the invasion of Kimoi. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I don't want people to panic and uh, dump their uh, stocks and fly out of Taiwan because of a statement that Chris made, not I. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying we're all doomed? Uh, saying that maybe you're doomed for saying that. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, so yes, tell us why you believe... 100% China will invade Taiwan or a this small month. Taiwanese island this month which is technically Taiwan so don't get mad at me for making that the title of this episode internet okay let me take you through the logic tree you ready okay i'm ready all right xi jinping wants taiwan to be a part of the prc during his his reign as you know king or emperor of china China describes uh, the way that, that Taiwan would become part of uh, China in two ways, peaceful means and non-peaceful means. And they can't say war because you can't have war between uh, a country and a province, according to them. According to us, of course, we would consider that war. But anyway, there's two ways. There's two ways to do it, right? Peaceful and non-peaceful means. One of the problems... Uh, right now, and it's been going on for quite a while now, is the trends in Taiwan show that the people here are more and more interested in keeping the status quo or keeping the status quo and moving towards independence, or even a few percentage of people want independence now. And that number is about 86%. For everything. For like status quo plus independence. Yeah, status quo or just status quo, and then all the way up to full independence. That's 86% of the, of the population, based on surveys that have been going on since 1994. And uh, the other 14 want unification with communist China? No, um, actually less than that, because there's, a, uh, there's maybe about 5, five to 6% uh, have no opinion. So actually less than that, maybe about 8 or 9% uh, want status quo moving towards unification well this is this is sad because all of those people are wrong there is only one option which is the glorious return of the republic of china to conquer to kick out the communist forces and take back mainland china or as they call it west taiwan thank you chris shen kai shek yes, yes. <laughs> chris is all over spirit. the place today <laughs> uh, so, okay so the all problem right. is all this democracy in Taiwan. Okay. We got to okay. go back okay. to the military okay. dictatorship. Okay. Uh, so can you tell us what the 86% is compared to like past trends? Like, is this like yeah. A, yeah. much it's, higher or? It's been going up. Uh, I believe uh, during uh, former President Ma's uh, rule here, it was down to about 77%. Um, uh, before that, it was even lower. So the trend is going up. And that's well known by the people here that that more and more people are 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 liking the status quo and they don't really want it to go the other direction. I'm um, sure Hong Kong played a big part in that. Yes. Well, and you know, uh, it's supposedly uh, what happened in Hong Kong affected the election here in terms of reelecting um, President Tsai. So, okay, so we know that, and so that that's a bad trend. But he can't do much about it right now because he doesn't. Uh, all his United Workfront activities or the MSS activities, the propaganda, all this stuff is not working very well, right? All right. But the other, the other, the other dimension of this is the non-peaceful means. Um, uh, so he has another bad trend happening right now. As you know, the, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act that was signed in uh, December of last year for 2023 states that the U.S. will start training Taiwanese military in Taiwan with U.S. military here and also send 
uh, over uh, over 500 uh, military personnel from Taiwan to the U.S. and get training. And there's a large amount of weapons coming to Taiwan in the next few years. And that's another bad trend for Xi Jinping. Um, so in other words, Taiwan is increasing its lethality. And this is the first time that it's really been doing it in a sort of open uh, open way uh, based on that law that was passed since 1979. Nothing like this has happened since then. So from their perspective, from the CCP's perspective, uh, things are changing in the wrong direction. Um, and we also know that, that, that the United States and NATO helped train uh, Ukrainian troops uh, for about uh, six years from 2017 until 2022, um, the U.S. and NATO were training and, and giving lethal training to uh, the Ukrainian troops. And that's one of the reasons why, that's one of the lessons that uh, was learned was that because of that training, I'm not saying it's the only reason, but it had a great a great effect on the, on the beginning of the war and the current status of the war. In other words, prevented the Russians from controlling Ukraine. Um, so... Xi Jinping needs to stop this trend. He, uh, he, he, and I believe he has to. He has to figure out a way to do that. And the way to do that is, I believe, he has to create leverage. He has to create a situation that stops the U.S. from training the ROC military and stops or slows down the weapons being transferred to Taiwan. So. Um, and by the way, the peaceful means and the non-peaceful means is terminology that was used in the anti-succession law in 2005. So that's where that comes from. All right. So there's, there's another dimension to all this is Xi Jinping does not have confidence in the PLA. The PLA hasn't really shown its ability to do anything successful. Uh, even the even 1979 war with Vietnam was not a glorious war where they destroyed the Vietnamese army and, and conquered it. They had to, they got into a stalemate and they had, and basically they withdrew. Um, also in 2016, uh, the, the PLA, PLA under the UN charter, under the UN uh, rules were in South Sudan protecting civilians. And when a bunch of rebels showed up, they basically ran away. Okay. So not exactly wolf warrior. Not Wolf Warrior in 2016. 2020, 21, even along the border with India and China, um, although the propaganda from China says that, you know, they only lost four soldiers, uh, other reports say up to 100 were killed. Um, and basically, they didn't do stellar there either. So there's really no, no way right now that Xi Jinping feels like if he, if he wanted to order the PLA to uh, conduct an invasion or a blockade, that he would be confident that they would be su successful. Isn't there also like some like weird purges and things happening in the PLA rocket force, which for a while was considered like the most modernized, capable branch of the PLA? Yes, I I'm going to get into that in just a second. Let me just okay. let me just let me just state the, the, the main main objective that I believe uh, Xi Jinping has to deal with. So he has to stop the military from improving the ROC military. So how does he do it? He needs to stop the military training and the weapons supplying to, to Taiwan. And by the way, today, um, the, the North Korea, the DPRK, came out with a, a press statement saying current situation of the U.S. government giving weapons to Taiwan and training military, although they don't say military, but they say that the U.S. is helping Taiwan it is a powder keg. It can, it's going to start a war. Yeah, all these kind of things. So this is this is propaganda coming from DPRK. So they're saying, basically, they're reinforcing uh, the point that I'm making is that China is very uncomfortable with this situation. All well, right. That's interesting because there was recently a meeting between Putin, Xi, and Kim Jong Un. Correct, and also they've been uh, talking. And also last week there was a uh, 70th anniversary of the Korean War celebrated in North Korea with the. Uh, the Russian defense minister and the vice premier of China there as well, telling everyone the world that that the leader of the DPRK is a great guy. But again, they're coordinating. Um, so let me before I get into the, the 
the, this concept here. I want to just m- make sure everyone understands. I am not predicting the end of the world as we know it in the middle of August. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not predicting that. What I'm predicting. That's the title of this episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get. I get that, Chris. But I, what I'm trying to say is, uh, there's a lot of con- there's a lot of uh, indicators that I, I believe say that there's going to be a culminating event around that time or thereafter. Um, and I'm, I'm going to point to all these different things that, that I, uh, the reasons why I want to, uh, I want to, I would state that. 